Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Good morning, good people. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Edmonton. This Mass is offered for the sick and for caregivers. Our thanks to our donor in Edmonton for making it possible for thousands of faithful across Canada to begin a new week with this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. Amen. We'll prepare ourselves for this celebration by again calling to mind God's goodness and God's graciousness to each of us. Being mindful too of the times in our lives when we fail to respond to that goodness and that graciousness, we ask again for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave St. Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the church. And we ask you this through Christ the Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humanity, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I'm telling the truth, I'm not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. of my supplication as I cry to you for help as I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary blessed be the Lord for he has heard my prayer the Lord is my strength and my shield in him my heart trusts so I am helped and my heart exalts and with my soul
of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be the shepherd and carry them forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus had finished all his sayings and the hearing of the people, he entered the town of Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he highly valued and who was ill and close to death. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, and the elders appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of, of you having doing this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at the centurion. And turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. This centurion must have been an extraordinary person. Though not a Jew, he had deep respect for the Jewish faith. As the elders told Jesus, he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue. So the elders of the synagogue pleaded with Jesus to do what the centurion asked of him and heal his sick servant, a servant who, much meant, who meant much to him. The centurion's words are familiar to all of us. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word 
and let my servant be healed. We repeat these centurion's words every time we come to Holy Communion. Lord, I am not worthy. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I've talked to a number of people recently who really don't like these words. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. For some reason, they see this as a put-down of themselves, a bit of a groveling. And I tell these people that worthiness has nothing to do with it. None of us are worthy to receive the bread of life. It's all about need. When we come up to receive Holy Communion, we hold out an empty hand, a symbol that all we bring to this exchange beyond our blessings is our needs, our frights, our worries, our weariness, our confusion, maybe our hurts and disappointments. We're not worthy, but we're needy. We need Christ, the bread of life, to nourish us for just another day, to give us the strength and the grace to cope with our own limitations of mind and body and the limitations of those around us. We need Christ, the bread of life, to help us handle the loneliness of our lives. We need Christ, the bread of life, to bring the patience we need to deal with our own faults and failings and the faults and failings of those with whom we live. Let's go back to the Last Supper where Jesus first gave us this gift. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. Who were these first people to receive this wondrous gift? Judas, who betrayed him. Peter, who swore an oath he never knew the man, and all the others who took off and abandoned Jesus when the authorities came to arrest him. Were they worthy of Christ's gift? No, but they were needy. They were frightened and confused men who had a foreboding of the troubles that were ahead. When Jesus gave us his body and blood as our food and our drink, our nourishment, he gave it to us as a gift, a gift we can't earn. Unfortunately, through the years, many have made this gift a reward, a reward for being good. This was never the mind of Jesus. For him, it is always a gift, a gift to the needy. You good people watching this television mass today can't receive Holy Communion with us here in this church sacramentally, but you do receive it spiritually, saying as you do, I'm not worthy, but I am needy. Please enter under my roof. And may the Lord bless us and give us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
We'll now place before a loving God our needs and our intentions. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, for his brother bishops, and for religious leaders of all faiths and all denominations, that the Spirit of God may be with them to lead them and guide them. For this, we pray to the Lord. For the people of Syria and all Middle Eastern countries suffering the pains of religious and political strife, we pray to the Lord. And for the intentions of all you good people sharing in this Mass, and for the intention of those who have made this Mass available to all of us, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we make these petitions known to you in the name of Jesus, your Son, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people and honor the passion of your holy martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian. And may the gifts that gave them courage under persecution make us steadfast in all our trials. We ask you this through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you gave them ardor to their, to their faith. To their endurance, you gave them great resolve. And in their struggles, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creation and heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out with unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from this. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. How do we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit? Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit and be co heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray now with confidence to the Father using the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of our church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We greet one another with the greeting of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, bring us to everlasting life. Would those of you at home join me now in this prayer about God's love? O God, your love for me is a mystery. I can count hundreds of reasons why I am unworthy of your providence and care. When I identify my talents and abilities, I must recognize that even these come from you. I can neither understand your esteem for me nor pretend to adequately respond to your graciousness. Guide me, then, in our relationship. Remove from me everything which keeps me apart from you. Give me all I need to grow and flourish in your love. Amen. Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the examples of your martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit and bear witness to the truth of the gospel. We ask you this through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Edmonton, Alberta, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C to M6.